paid for this. We don't want to pay for your education. We want you to understand there's a code of ethics. There should be a code of command. That means when you guys come in here and you have a project, or you have something that wants done, the CEO should be the one in charge. It's all done in big companies all the same way. But it seems that everybody has their own little thing, and you got five little bosses running around, and you're bossing all the directors. Nobody knows what to do. And they're all bullied, and they're intimidated by their jobs. And what the way it really should be working is the CEO. If the people are, if you're not happy with the CEO, it takes a 3 2 vote to get them out. And you get somebody in that does your job. But it's not your job to go to each and every one of the directors and bully them, like Pacheco does, and try to get projects through. Like through the Sid Masabi deal that's going up tonight. This is unheard of. And no other cities are doing this. And the ones that are, like Palm Springs and all these other deals, they're getting caught. And it's going to happen here too. So I'm just warning you guys that you need to have a code of ethics. And all we want you to do is understand the law. And that is not to demoralize the, the uh, employees here, not to intimidate them that their job can be lost if they don't do what you say. And it's not legal for what they're supposed to do. What you need to understand is, is they're trying to do their job. You hired Shannon here as a CEO. He's an expert, supposedly, in his field. That's what he should be doing. You should be going to him. The people hired you not as a financier, not as a... You're done. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Going along with my complaint is, you guys put this thing out here that's 530. Meeting didn't start at 540. I'm pretty sure you all have uh, cellular phones that have a clock on them. He showed up, looked at us, walked away, came in late. At 530? Yeah, I did. Oh, is there a Don't interrupt me. No. I'm not, but I'm just I don't interrupt you, sir. Continue. And you're very rude. Okay. So are you. Okay. All right, go ahead. Continue. You're going to get your day in court, right? I guarantee you. Sure. You, as a lawyer, should rub the dead by guy. Mm -hmm. and tell him he doesn't interrupt people. I don't interrupt him when he speaks. He shouldn't interrupt anybody else, including me. He hasn't apologized for being a rude person. So I'm saying to the mayor, you're not doing your job. You can't even stand up and tell that gentleman. You apologize for being rude to all of our residents. You don't care. That's why you need to go. You know, you guys, you write this memo up, you didn't even open the meeting and say, good morning, good afternoon, people, ball of park. This is a special meeting. You say it, you mumble it, and you don't say it. Not. You go into the regular meeting, you do the same thing. I don't know where you got all your ethics from. They're very poor. You didn't know better. And do you still let this gentleman be a representative of all parts? I can't believe it. He was reading a book about that thing to all of you. The first thing came out of your soul is, I'm an adult. Or act like one. Act for You should be acting like a mayor of Bubble Park residence. That you know you work as a mayor of individual. You work as a city council individual. And the other people that try to run the city at a better pace and more like a residence one, it's not eligible. You have this person that never on time. And you think it's okay. Very poor. You're the boss of these group of people. I know you say you're not, but you should be. If, if you don't want to be their leader, maybe you ought to put the CEO in charge. And let them read that book of ethics that they've been bringing up and you people don't, don't abide by it. You seem to, oh, I'll move over here and nobody will tell me. It don't Mr. work that way. Mr. That's why the city oh, of Bell right, is in your decision. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I will call the communication.
I just want to repeat, I'm no one's boss here. Everyone is both elected independent, and they have the same power, power that I have. Really, everyone's equal as far as the votes are concerned and the way they get elected. The residents are the bosses. All right, okay, so at this point, we're going to go to the, uh, the uh, open session, which is the Downtown Public Arts Commission. Hey. Good evening, honorable mayor and council members. <clears throat> uh, this presentation is about a very low cost opportunity that the city has to improve the vibrancy of our downtown while at the same time supporting the local arts. <clears throat> at the city council meeting on August 5th, a council member mentioned the vibrancy of the downtown districts in the cities of Brea, Provina, Monrovia, and San Dimas. And while Public Works has started to make low-cost changes to our downtown, such as lighting the palm trees and upgrading the landscaping, I wondered if there was some other simple thing that Public Works could do to make our downtown more vibrant. I visited the cities that the council member had mentioned and discovered that they all have public art in their downtown districts. Now, uh, Holden Park also has downtown, has uh, public art. We have uh, most notably Judith Baca's Danzas and Vigilas, and we also have art at the Metro. But our public art is kind of in out of the way locations and is not visible to the public unless it actually seeks to see that art. However, we have infrastructure in our downtown, right on our sidewalks and next to some of our busy streets. And this provides a canvas for public art, art that is visible, approachable, and provides the opportunity to bring life and vibrancy to the area while providing our local artists with a venue to publicly display their talent. <clears throat> A few cities around the country are allowing utility boxes, um, a piece of plain and unimaginative infrastructure in most cases, to be transformed into immediately accessible and vibrant public art. And uh, the next couple of slides show examples of what's being done around the country. So uh, this is a photo map of our, of our downtown district. Uh, it's roughly bordered by Baldwin Park Boulevard, Main Avenue, and Luna Boulevard, and Clark Street. You'll see the, uh, the little red squares that I have on there indicate 27 city-owned utility boxes within our downtown district that could serve as canvases for public art. Now I know that cost is something that is always considered by this council in the decisions that each member makes, and often a single piece of traditional public art has a cost in the tens of thousands of dollars, and sometimes even more, and that big expenditures on public art are often very difficult to explain to constituents. However, the good news is with this program is that it's very low cost. It's, it's basically we provide artists with sandpaper and paint. And the city crews, after the art has been um, placed, we use a graffiti coating that we cover the art with to, to help preserve it. Um, the city could also provide QR codes. If you remember QR codes from five or six years ago, we could provide QR code decals that could be placed on the piece of art that would lead to a landing page that would have a bio of the artist and an explanation of their work, as well as a link to maybe some information on our downtown district. Uh, now for the hard part. So the hard part of this is determining what is art, what's, what's appropriate for our downtown. And so um, other cities that have been doing this for quite a while have actually developed call for submissions packages and city councils have appointed <coughs> arts commissions or committees that actually make the selection from the submissions to determine what should go on to the, onto the art pieces. So my, my call for action for, for the council this evening is if, if the council would like to proceed with this program, I would ask that you uh, provide me with correction on how we would form a committee, whether that be by an ad hoc committee, if it's a committee or commission that's appointed by the council, uh, what have you. So that's, that's basically what I'm looking for. Who are the artists? The, the artist, well, we would, we would submit a, uh, a call for submissions. Uh, we publicize that uh, on our website throughout the art community. And um, these, these submissions will be made to the city. Um, most cities that are doing this don't provide a stipend. So a lot of times it's high school kids. It's, yeah. it's, I was just going to say, we, did they display art here annually? Well, Sarah Vista and Mall Park, you have a season of an art. 
submissions could establish guidelines. Um, some cities have done things like what you said. Um, so that's, when, when the call for submissions is advertised, we could have all the guidelines all the way down, and the committee or the commission, however you guys decide to do it, could establish those before we even advertise. So mm -hmm. don't waste the money's time. Again, uh, I mean, I'd recommend the whole, the whole council get involved in that okay. commission. Mm -hmm. or, uh, but one of my concerns is, what about if it's, Controversial art. You know, how, do, how, how do other cities handle art that may be objectionable to the public? So usually, what they do on their call for submissions is they have a template of the box that the artist has to submit to them, and they show what the art's going to be. And and they have guidelines about you can't use trademarks. It can't be something that's going to incite crime. They have a, they have a whole list of things that the art cannot be. And then the commission's the final arbiter of whether or not that's the art that's submitted is something that the city wants to put on the box. What are the legalities of somebody who really feels that you should have an art piece up there and there's freedom of speech and that sort of thing? We would, work, we, would work, we would work with the city attorney on making sure that our guidelines are drafted. And again, other cities in Southern California have been doing this. Um, so we would look to them and, and ask them on the guidelines as to, as to um, first amendment May I ask a question? I mean, I understand the freedom of speech, but if we're going to have a committee, I mean, wouldn't ultimately the committee make that decision? I mean, you have to go to submit, you know, their, their art. There's always going to be some kind of provision saying, you know, this is just a submission. It's no guarantee, right? So they can't necessarily say we just missed them due to language or freedom of speech, right? Yes. So I think that we have I'm a commission not. established. That's a good legitimate yeah, but I'm just, I mean, I'm for the artwork. That, that there's a, you know, but there's also going to be times where somebody's going to object to something that comes in. Maybe not immediately, but down the road. I just want to have the rules in place. Well, and, and also, a lot of the other cities don't guarantee that the art will remain. Mm -hmm. And so, if, if it does prove to be controversial at some point in the future, then the city could remove the art. And we also have to have in place um, some type of a release for intellectual property. Yes, but um, what we have to do now is to make sure that in the agreement that the art becomes the property of the city. Yeah. Can, can or it becomes the property of the city for a certain period of time. Yeah, yeah, this is, see, it's up for three years or five years, and after that. Yeah. And what a lot of cities also do is that when they use photographs of the art and commercial material, they, they try their best to um, identify the artist. So that's, that, that's a provision that's made for the artist. But again, the images do belong to the city. And I'd like to include, there's a gentleman that, that has been very active in trying to put together like an art show, and he has uh, several restaurants or a uh, pack or whatever. His name is Phil Correa, and um, he's, he's, he's at the street fair pretty often. Um, I have his number, but I know that right now he's trying to put something together that's going to incorporate some of the music and so forth along with some of the art pieces that he has. 
but I, I would like to throw his name in. I know that there's probably a lot of other people, but because he's very active and always talking about the art and, and inspiring other other young people to continue, I would like to sort of throw his name in the hat as someone that might be interested in the community as well. And okay, he's been wanting to be part of some uh -huh. kind of art group all yes. the time. I would also say that we should invite the high school. I know we have some great teachers at the high school mm -hmm. that, you know, that teach the arts. Maybe one of them to be part of the commission just you want to because they're easily accessible and they can recommend artists or a vision. But I think that that would be great. So if I'm hearing this, the, the council would like a commission would like to appoint members of the commission, so should should uh so, so is that the direction? Yeah, oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, he said that the okay. council is going to say I agree with him too, because it was, we just kind of have to know. Maybe we start out with the council and then later on yeah, I agree. possibly okay. look at the uh, planning commission as we can. Okay, so uh, what I will do is I will bring uh, draft guidelines for the council's approval. I'll bring a draft submission package for the council's approval of the future uh, council date. <laughs> Once you guys have approved it, I will uh, go ahead and start advertising it for our submissions, and then we'll arrange a study session for your approval. I was going to ask, um, ask if you can, in the meantime, I know it's going to be a little while, even through the internet, download some of the pieces and those cities just so you can have an idea. Sure. And I'm just those some of them, and I don't know what they wanted to go green, so their idea was it's the palm trees, and so it kind of ends in, but mm -hmm. let's just see some samples of other cities, what their themes are, so we can get some idea. Okay. You should one of your pieces. I should. You should commission me. I'll pay <laughs> Just make a submission. <laughs> I will. I'll have to lobby for some votes in here, but I'll know. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is the open storage of vehicles and industrial commercial control. I don't know, Mark, if you wanted to talk about this, I know the item was before the council. Recently, and asked to come back and take part in that information that the applicant was invited tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For which item? So, is this the one? Oh. The open storage. This is the Um, complaints about not being helped, we're trying to resolve that. 
um, asking people if they received the service that they have expected. If we get the results are pretty good, although we're always working to that are higher. Um, where your answers, um, answers to your question, fair and easy to understand. And then how would you rate the quality of service that we received as far as courtesy, knowledge, expediency, and then some people that are confident at all. So right now it looks like these are um, excellent, which is pretty good. So between, between good and excellent, we're a little bit above 80%. But of course, um, our goal would be to always strive for 100 percent. And then an overall rating of the city services uh, was another question. And then also, we're asking people how that they would rate the facility, um, the signage, the appearance, the cleanliness of the facilities. Um, and we also we leave room for people to make comments. So if there's specific things that they see, we can try to address those. Some of those comments we received um, included the seats in the lobby being uh, needed to be cleaned. We actually looked at them, they're just really old and dingy, so we put in this to replace them. Those are being ordered now. Um, we also had a complaint about the front doors being um, very difficult for people in wheelchairs or with disabilities. We fixed those and replaced those doors with automatic doors to have a comply with ABA. Um, a couple of the comments. Um, or that we need to be open longer in planning or that we needed more staff. And that was done in the last budget and we finally filled those positions with new planning uh, staff at the counter. And the positions have been filled and the planning is now available um, uh, during the fall of the day. And then just some of the positive comments we got um, that uh, they appreciated some of the people in the building and the business license clerk. And sometimes the staff name were used, we didn't use them here. Just um, be considerate, but, um, and then some comments we got. Great job with the staff, and we need more equipment and people are still building us. So those are some of the feedback received. Um, we're going to be ongoing with the survey and we're going to analyze it. And we're going to try to improve our results and resolve any of the issues that come out of that. And I just wanted to share that with you and let me see if you have any questions or comments. That's really nice. You know, it's it's good because um, you know before there were so many comments about you know problems with customer service, and, and I had to talk with you about that as well as some of the other directors. Um, that the people felt that sometimes we were being ignored, or you know, for whatever reason, we waited too long. Um, so I'm glad to see that all of these improvements. I I haven't heard anything in a while. So. Yeah, I think it's good to see the. The facts that are up to their staff is doing a good job in terms of customer service. But what I would like to see is if it's extended out also to contractors, uh, other individuals that we've hired, because there's sort of an extension of the city, and, and it's good that uh, they also take this type of training. So you know, there were of the expectations that that, that we had, because there there are you know sub employees in the city that we need to represent. So we can take a look at that. Good job. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, this is where we go into uh, closed sessions.